Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to be doing clue number 13 of Sunday Stars. I hope you're doing fantastic. Isn't this pretty? It was drying after I washed it. Ah, oh, buttercream. Yeah. Buttercream, he's a good girl. He's a good birdie. <laughs> this is Rudy, our rootin' tootin' rooster. <laughs> he's a good boy. He is a good boy. Yeah. Today I thought I'd bring you through our, our garden, which is growing so fast. These are our baby cucumbers. They're coming along. There's a few babies on there. And then we have a couple of green tomatoes. Those are growing in really fast too. We have some peas and every day when I go out, there's more and more peas and they're bigger and bigger every day. <laughs> I can't wait to have some of those. We have some yellow squash coming in. Look at that little baby. Do you like squash? How about pan fried squash with onions? These are our uh, pumpkins. We're gonna have some pumpkins. I cannot wait. Our dill is doing fantastic. I have to learn how, what to do to dry it out. And then y'all look at this lettuce. It is growing so fast and good news, it tastes really good now. <laughs> I was worried. And this is our broccoli, which we cut right after I filmed this because it's starting to flower. And I used some in a homemade broccoli and cheese soup for our supper. Doesn't that just look amazing? It is so good. Let's get started with clue number 13. And I have some fun stuff for you today. Hi everybody, welcome back to my house. Today we're doing clue number 13 of the Paper Pieced Mystery Quilt Sunday Stars. How are you doing on your quilt? I am so, so far behind. I think in our clues we're going to start slowing down just a little bit on the stuff we're doing weekly so I can catch up. <laughs> I am so far behind. I have my hands in clue 9, 10, 11, 12, and now 13. I need a couple of good nights where I can just hunker down and do a lots and lots of sewing just to catch up. How are you doing? Did you notice anything different when you clicked on my video today? I have changed. It's official. I have changed the name of my YouTube channel. I have felt for some time that I really needed like a rebranding here on YouTube. Now don't get me wrong. I am still predominantly a quilting YouTube channel. Most of my content will be qu quilting related, if not Sunday stars, a mug rug, a trivet, a wall quilt, an art quilt, some kind of quilting themed video, right? <laughs> That's predominantly what I do here. But for some time, I have felt like I really need to include all the other stuff that I'm doing that I randomly make a video about here and there, right? Like the bread making, uh, updates about my chickens and things like that, right? I have, um, I feel like we're always changing, right? We're growing, we're learning more, we're expanding our knowledges about all kinds of stuff. And I really wanted to include you in on that journey too, because maybe I'm learning something that you wanna learn about. Maybe you can teach me a thing or two about what I'm doing. <laughs> and I love that about this community. But yeah, uh, the Quilt Maker Homestead with Lisa Cape and Quilts. You'll still be able to find me here on YouTube. If you search in Lisa Cape and Quilts, my channel will still come up. And if you're already subscribed, you don't have to resubscribe. It did all of that for me and for you. And if you're not subscribed, you might want to because I plan on doing all kinds of content uh, in the future about not just quilting stuff, but uh, for example, uh, I've been buying more ingredients when I go to the store versus finished boxed or canned items, right? Like a box cake mix. I'm learning how to make cake from scratch with ingredients. And those ingredients can make all types of cakes, not just a chocolate cake or a strawberry cake from a box, right? 
the ingredients, taking that and making all kinds of stuff with it. All types of bread. I'm going to be doing sour bre sourdough bread in the future. I haven't started that yet. It's still waiting. But yeah, all kinds of stuff like that, right? I want to buy less finished products from the store like I now make my own mayonnaise. <laughs> and it's delicious. Uh, but things like that, right? Uh, like a year, a year and a half, two years ago, or maybe it was during COVID, I said, I want to start learning how to make my own bread. Now I make my own bread. Doesn't that sound fun? Anyway, to include all of that stuff, there's the change name for my YouTube channel. I'm excited about it. I hope you like the new name, but uh, I'm still Lisa Capen. Lisa Capen Quilt's my business name. Quilt Maker Homestead is my YouTube channel name. All right, I have something really fun to share with you before we get started with clue number 13. But first, before I get to that fun thing, <laughs> uh, if you're skipping around, you don't want to miss that. Let me show you the progress of our quilt to include clue number 13. She's coming along. I was looking, <laughs> I was looking at all the pieces we have left to do. And I was comparing that to the fabric requirements needed to make this whole quilt top, right? And I've been puzzled about it because in the very beginning, okay, so a little backstory while you're just looking and admiring all of our handiwork here on the screen. I used a program called EQ8 to design this quilt top. EQ8 is awesome. I'm not an affiliate of EQ8. I'm not sponsored by EQ8. There's lots and lots of channels here on YouTube. If you want to learn about EQ8, I'm not proficient enough in it yet to really teach on it, right? But if you want to learn a, a quilting software to design your own quilts, you might want to look into EQ8. Anyway, I used EQ8 to design our mystery quilt. And when you do that, there's a nifty little feature in EQ8 that will tell you after you've designed your quilt top, your yardage requirements for each one of your colors, right? It told me like six yards of the light background color. So that's what I told y'all to get. That's what I bought. I actually bought more than six yards because I like to buy more so that I can teach with it or do some extra stuff, right? But six yards and uh, I have not even used up half of my background color. How about you? <laughs> I've not even used up half of it and we're running out of space to fill in. I am so confused about that. I don't know if it's a glitch in EQ8, which is probably not. I don't know if I've hidden some fabrics in my design and it's counting that, but I've reconfigured it and I've redone it several times and it's always telling me six yards of background color. I don't know why, unless when we're cutting strips to cut our pieces from, we're saving so much fabric by doing that in EQ8 figures you're going to cut these pieces out differently than cutting strips like what we're doing. That could be the case. Anyway, I still have lots and lots of background fabric. How about you? I'm almost thinking <laughs> we're going to have some background fabric, a good little chunk to put into our stash when we're done. I don't know. Anyway, that was random, random thought. Here's our progress. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to show you a close up. Okay, so today we're making 12 little flying geese units. That's going to go on the other side of clue number 12. Did I say clue number 12 a minute ago? This is clue 13. I'm, pu I'm putting arrows to it right here. We're making 12 of these units this week. I want you to see it's kind of almost formed a whole entire star block, right? We're not assembling anything though, even though after this week we'll have all the pieces that you see here to form this almost full block and you could start sewing that together. We're waiting. I am so far behind. We're waiting. <laughs> we're going to sew this entire star block together once we fill in that little missing gray area. Okay. And that's coming up down the road. But once we do that, then we will sew together the whole entire star block. 
Isn't that pretty? Okay. All right. Let me show you something really cool. Okay. So a lot of the times when I'm joining pieces, like for example, right? Clue number two to clue number six, right? We sew them together. And then I take my handy dandy little pointy stick, right? That I got at the Dollar Tree. When I take this, uh, I like to score that paper on the sewn seam and the paper just releases a lot easier for me. You don't have to have it, right? You don't have to do that. It's just something I like to do. But many of you have asked, where did you get this? And many of you have said, oh, my Dollar Tree doesn't have it anymore. I got this a few years ago. It might be that my Dollar Tree doesn't carry it anymore. I don't know. I haven't looked. <laughs> but what it actually is, is a weeding tool for vinyl. Like if you cut vinyl on your cutting machine and you're picking out all the bits that aren't used in your design, right? You're weeding out all the extra parts. This little pointy thing picks that extra vinyl and lifts it right up off of your design, right? It's like a needle <laughs> in a plastic little handle. Many of you can't find it. So we're going to make our own today using some Dollar Tree stuff and hopefully some needles that you might already have. Okay, so if you want to make one of these and use it the same way I use it in my paper piecing, just to help score that paper, it helps come off a little bit easier. I'm going to show you how to do that today. And then we're doing clue number 13. I feel like I've talked a lot. <laughs> Let's come on down to the pressing mat. Before we get to this, I just want to show you how to make your own little pointy tool, right? Here it is. See, it's got a little needle. See that? At the Dollar Tree, just two days ago, I picked these up. You get five little mechanical pencils for a dollar. These are um, the 7.7 7 millimeter uh, mechanical pencils. They have one piece of lead in them each. <laughs> That's it. But it does say refillable. Okay, so if you had 0.7 7 millimeter lead, you could refill these little uh, pencils, right? So I'm just going to grab one of these out of here. We're going to make this into a weeding tool or my, a pokey thing for paper piecing. <laughs> the next I have uh, some Milner's needles, okay? Um, I'm sure all different kinds of sewing needles will work. I have all kinds, different shapes, different sizes of hand sewing needles. But the ones that I found that work the easiest for me are Milner's needles. Now the size of these, these are assorted sizes. And the sizes go from size 3 to size 9. What I found is the 3 is too thin and the 9 is too thick. But it doesn't tell you what the sizes of everything in between is in this assorted pack. <laughs> so grab an assortment of needle sizes. I almost think it's a seven, but I can't say that because they didn't number all the sizes in between. So I don't know. But if you use one that's too little, it's just going to fall right through the tip of the pencil. And if you use one that's too big, it's not even going to go down inside the pencil. When you click, nothing's going to come out. But when you find the right size, the one just in between, <laughs> uh, it fits perfectly. Okay. And so with this particular Dollar Tree pencil, uh, to refill it, you pull the little eraser out. Right. Now I've already taken the one piece of lead that came inside the pencil out. And you can almost take the piece of lead out and then compare it to the size of your needles to find one that's close. That might be the easiest way to go about sizing the right needle. But once you find one that's the same size as your lead, I'm just going to drop it right down the middle. I can't do it this way so you can see because it won't drop down. But I'm just going to hold it up and drop it right down the middle. And it has dropped inside this little white gear thingy holder lead holder thing inside the pencil and um, I'm not even going to put the eraser back on yet I'm just going to start clicking just to see if the needle works right and when I click 
the needle starts to come out. See that? There is my pointy thing. And when I push on it, the needle does not go back in. It is still out the exact same. But when I'm done with the tool, right, I don't need to leave that needle, the pointy part sticking out. I can press the button and push it back down just like you would the lead of a pencil, right? And so now there's no sharp pointy tool. I'm going to put the eraser back on. And now when I want to use my pointy tool, all I have to do is click the button. There's my pointy tool. And now I'm just going to use this as an example. I can use it the same exact way, right? I like to just score that paper right where I've sewn, pick at it, and then pull that paper off. So if you want a little pointy thing <laughs> for your paper piecing or your vinyl weeding, there you go. <laughs> I just thought I'd share that with you because I've seen lots of people ask me where I got my pointy tool and they've also said they can't find them anymore or they can't find them at all, right? So there you go. It doesn't have to be a Dollar Tree mechanical pencil. You could get it anywhere. But an assorted size of needles, check and compare until you find one that fits the particular pencil that you're using. Ta-da! You've made your own uh, picking tool. Okay, let me turn this light off. I didn't even realize I had it on. This week, we're, we are sewing 12 pieces. They're little flying geese units, right? Of the foundation PDF, you're going to print two copies. That's going to give you 12 of these pieces. I think that I've been forgetting to measure these pieces the last couple clues. Let's just go ahead and do that before I forget again. This should measure six and a half inches from here the outside edge to the outside edge six and a half inches okay that's your measurement for this week and uh, again we're doing 12 of these I'm thinking this week should go by pretty quick <laughs> and uh, here is your instruction at PDF it's going to tell you how many strips how wide your strip should be and how many pieces you need of each template and of course the updated progress photo to include clue number 13 here are your templates on page 2 of the instruction PDF okay we're gonna go ahead and piece one of these units together I need to cut these out though first so let me go do that and then we're gonna do some paper piecing Okay, here we are with our foundation. We're going to go ahead and get started. Three pieces of fabric make up this unit. So I think it should go by pretty quickly, right? We're going to go ahead and lay down the first fabric right here in the middle. And I'm finger pressing. And then we're going to piece uh, piece number two, which is the dark pink fabric. So the long side of the triangle is going to go this way. Y'all know this already. We have done so many of these units in different configurations though, right? Some of them have triangles here. Some of them have squares here. But we have done this particular part several times already in the making of this quilt. So we're going to go ahead and sew this seam. over here let me cut this first long thread <laughs> 
we're going to go ahead and trim away the extra fabric. We're going to add glue there and flip that piece number two fabric over. Now I know, <laughs> I know that there are many of you who are making this quilt along with me that this is your first time foundation paper piecing and you have fallen in love with foundation paper piecing. Many of you, y'all know all the things about the foundation paper piecing and you've been doing it for some time. I do have many quilters this is their first time doing foundation paper piecing. I am just so impressed. There's that piece there, right? Uh, piece number two is going to come in just like that, right? Long part of the triangle right there. Anyway, how do you feel about English paper piecing? I have a project coming up that's doing doing English paper piecing. Totally different ball game. Hand sewing required. <laughs> English paper piecing. Keep your eyes out for that. I have never done an English paper piecing video here on YouTube. Anywhere, actually. <laughs> uh, so if you've never heard of English paper piecing, look it up on YouTube you might just fall in love with a whole new genre of quilting related type of videos. <laughs> All right, there is our piece number three. We're going to go sew that seam. I just saw a bird fly into my wall. I hope it's okay. Let me go check for the bird, make sure it's okay. <laughs> okay, it must have been fine because it must have flown away. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're gonna go ahead and trim the extra fabric here. See, just three pieces make up this unit. That's why I think even though we're doing 12 units this week, they're gonna go by quickly. Many of you are going to be finished the afternoon that this clue comes out. You're going to be working on other projects for a whole week until next week <laughs> when clue 14 comes out. All right, so there are my three fabrics added to this clue, right? Let's go ahead and trim this unit up and clear away all of the extra tidbits, right? I am a creature of habit. I'm still getting used to my rotating mat. I think once I get used to it though, I'm going to love it. <laughs> this unit definitely comes together quick. Oh, see, I just turned it by, <laughs> I just turned it with my hand. That's like when I put the knee lift on my sewing machine. I still use my fingers to lift the presser foot up. <laughs> it takes a long time for me to adjust to anything new. How about you? All right. Here is my finished clue number 13 piece. Look how pretty and perfect that is. Right? Uh, let me grab a couple of the other pieces that this will eventually go and join two, it's just so we can get a little peek of what it's all gonna come together and look like, right? I'll be right back. 
All right, you can kind of see how this is coming along. Now keep in mind, I am still so far behind on my clues. I only have the one unit that I made with you for clue number 12. <laughs> and I've only done one of these units to show you an example of, right, for clue number 13 this week. But you're gonna kind of get a, a, an exam, a idea of what the block's gonna look like, right? So if we pull clue number five, this unit, and we lay it down like this, right? Let me get it in the screen. And then if you pull clue number 12 pieces and you turn it so that it's like this, right? And then you take clue number 13 and you put it like this. That's how it's coming together. Isn't that gonna be so pretty? I absolutely love that, but you can kind of get an idea. If you have finished all of clue number 12 pieces, you'll have the missing piece here. And you'll have, if you do all of clue 13, you'll have another one here, right? I'm just behind y'all. And it's gonna be super busy for me. The next, uh, what is today's date? The 30th, 12 days. I am pre-recording lots of clues in the next 12 days, y'all, because I have big, life changes for me and my health wise coming up good things but um i am far behind and i don't see me catching up unless i can do lots hunker down and do lots of sewing in the evenings <laughs> because i'm going to be pre-recording lots of videos so in the future you might see me wear the same shirt several weeks in a row but that's because i'm recording videos back to back to back <laughs> And it only looks like I'm wearing the same shirt every week, but I won't be. <laughs> that's what it looks like, right? That's our progress, or that's my progress so far. I hope you're enjoying this quilt. I hope it is so much fun for you. Um, I hope you're learning new things. I hope that, I hope that even, even if you've done foundation paper piecing for a long time, that something that you've seen sparks another way of doing it right maybe it's easier for you this way maybe you're like lisa you're doing things the way i do them totally different and it's easier the way that i do it versus the way you're doing it lisa <laughs> and that's fine too right i always think that there are lots and lots of ways to achieve one particular goal don't you think that no matter what, just know that I'm grateful that you're following along with me, even if you're not making this quilt. And I can't wait to see you next week. And uh, yeah, have fun with this quilt clue. And uh, be safe, everybody. I'll see you next week. Bye.